One very powerful yet somewhat opaque concept that many developers seem to struggle with is dependency injection. And I think this is mainly because a lot of times you're not really working with actual code and instead it just seems like it's some type of weird magic that's happening behind the scenes, making it quite difficult to visualize in your mind. So due to that, in this video, I hope to provide a nice, clear, concise understanding of exactly what dependency injection is and how it works. This video will be split into two parts. The first will be a real world analogy using props to go over the concept of what dependency injection is. And then in the second part, we'll jump into the code and see how it's done within the software. My name's Matt, core maintainer of Apex. I do loads of short and to the point videos regarding all things PHP and Apex in particular. If that by chance interests you, please make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated on the channel. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. Upon looking into dependency injection, one term you'll always come across is services container, or just container in general. So let's start there. What the heck is this container thing? Well, you can think of a container as nothing more than a toolbox. Hey, I'm a blind software developer. Cut me some slack. This will work just fine. Toolbox. <laughs> All right. So your toolbox can contain anything and everything you would like. Strings, arrays, objects, closures, whatever you need to help facilitate the software requests. Now, in any project you get involved with, there will almost always generally be some standardized PSR compliant items inside here. These will be things like your cache, logger, HTTP client, and things of that nature. But again, it can contain anything and everything you would like. So for this example, let's go ahead and fill it up with items. So here we got, sorry, I am blind, hang tight. Business card, credit card and some nicotine lozenges. We got a phone and a passport. We got a couple batteries and a USB drive. And we got some coins. That should be good enough for this example. Now on top of just getting a toolbox, this also comes manned by an assistant. And not just any assistant, but an absolutely amazing assistant, which I'll explain later on in this video. Now for this example, let's just pretend we're a software request. And as we're going through and executing the code, our assistant is always going to be right beside us, following us along through the request, carrying this toolbox, always there, always ready to help. Now again, for this example, let's assume we are writing some software to take an international flight. And right now we're at the point where we've gotten to the airport, we've hopped on the airplane, we've landed at our destination, airplane has taxied up to the gate, Doors open and flight attendants come on and let us know we can disembark. And now our software request begins. And right now we have to write some software to get off the airplane and go through immigration. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is start a new blank class. And we'll call this immigration controller or immigration helper or whatever we want. Now we're gonna think to ourselves, so what items do I need from this container in order to get off the airplane and get through immigration? And then I'm gonna write these down in either the properties or the constructor. So I'm gonna need my passport, I'll write that in. I'm gonna need my phone to show my vaccine certificate. And I'm gonna need a customs declaration form. Now, I already know there is no customs declaration form inside the container. So inside the use declarations, just under the namespace, I'm gonna put in a line that says, you can get a customs form from the flight attendant. Now, this class is already gonna be sitting inside the software. So to instantiate it, instead of using the new keyword, I'm simply going to ask my assistant, hey, can you go into the software and get the immigration helper class for me? And our assistant will say, yeah, no problem, boss. He'll run into the software. He'll grab it for us. And before he gives it back to us, he's going to look through it. And he's going to look through the items or the dependencies I listed. And he's going to see, okay, he needs a passport and a phone, no problem. And he's going to pull these out of the container for us and put them in and inject them into those properties. Then he's going to come across a customs declaration form, which we don't have in the container. But he's going to notice in the use declarations, it says he can get one from the flight attendant. So great. He'll ding the bell, the flight attendant will come over, and he'll get himself a customs form. Now, as I previously, pre as I previously said, this is no ordinary assistant. This is an absolutely excellent assistant, one of the best of the best. 
So as he's gathering all these items for us, he's going to analyze each one. So when he gets to the customs form, he's going to see, oh, this needs his first name, his date of birth, the address of his hotel. Well, I know all this information. And without any prompting from me, he's going to proactively go ahead and fill out the entire customs form for us. Then he's going to inject all these into the properties within the class. Then he's going to hand me back the class. So when I get the class, I already have all the tools I need to complete the task at hand. And not only do I have a customs form, but I have one that's already fully filled out, again, without any prompting from me. So now I just simply run through the methods of my class. I get off the airplane. I wait in line. I get up to the desk. I hand the immigration officer my documents. I get my visa in return, and I walk out to the arrivals. That's it. Done. And now we're at the arrivals, and we will move on to the second and last part of this example. Now that I'm past immigration and at the arrivals area of the airport, I need to somehow get into a taxi and to a hotel. So, exact same process as the first time. We start a new blank class, we can call this one taxi ride or something, and we think to ourselves, what items do we need from our container to get us checked into our hotel? So we'll need our passport, we'll need the business card of the hotel so we know the address, and we'll need our credit card. Again, this class will already be in the software, so we simply ask our assistant, hey, can you please go get that taxi ride class for us? He'll say, no problem, boss. He'll run over to the software. He'll grab it. He'll take a look at the dependencies. He'll say, oh, I got this. So he needs business card and credit card. And he needs passport. Not a problem. He injects these into the properties for us, hands it back to us. Great. And we go run through the methods. We hop into our taxi. And off to the hotel we go. Now, once again, this is no ordinary assistant. He's absolutely best of the best. Couldn't live without him. So he's already proactively taken it upon himself to analyze the trip from the airport to the hotel. And he knows that there's a toll booth during this trip and the driver's gonna need some coins to get us through the toll booth. So again, without any prompting from me, he's already taken it upon himself to go into the container, pull out the coins and give them to the driver because his job is to make my job as easy as possible. And that is basically dependency injection in a nutshell. You have a container full of whatever items you'd like this container is constantly manned by an assistant who follows you around throughout the software request and he will instantiate all the different classes for you. He'll fill in the dependencies you need and not only will he do that, he'll analyze each dependency and fill in the dependencies each dependency needs. And with that said, let's jump into the second part of this video and let's see how it's done in the code. So I'm just starting with a default Apex installation using that four line Docker install and I'll include instructions to that in the video description. As you can see that default installation successful template is there. Now back in my Docker container I'm going to quickly run this Apex package create command to set up a quick package for development. And to help save time I've already written a quick writer class. As you can see there is a quick use declaration to the convert library. And the class contains one property, which does have an inject attribute assigned to it, which again points to that convert class. And then the property declaration itself, which is an instance of that convert class. This class simply contains one method named format, which takes an input string, converts it into a phrase in title case, and returns it. Now anytime this class is instantiated through the container, the exact same process will happen. Our assistant will go get the class from the software, it'll look through the dependencies, it's going to notice that inject attribute in front of the convert property, and it'll go ahead and grab the convert library and inject it directly into that property. Now let's go ahead and create a view to see how this works in practice. Okay, and back in our Docker container, we're going to create a quick view. And we're going to also include that optional root flag to automatically add the root in for us. And we're also going to define a dynamic path parameter, hence that colon. And then, then we're going to go to the HTML file of the new view. And we'll just quickly call this demo page. And then we're going to add a couple paragraphs with some merge fields. We'll go result, and we'll call that res. That's enough, that's all we need. And then we're going to go into the PHP file of that new view. And the first thing we'll do is we'll add in a use declaration pointing to that writer class that we previously saved. 
And then within the properties section of this class, we will first add an inject attribute, point into the writer class, and then we're going to add the actual property declaration itself for the writer instance. And then within the render method, we're simply going to first grab that dynamic path parameter. And then we're going to convert it through the writer library to title case. And then last, we're simply going to assign those two merge variables to the template. There we go. And that should be all we need. And we can go back to Firefox now. And then we go to title slash dogs are awesome. And it works exactly as we expect. Expect. We have our dogs underscore are awesome from the URL and then the converted sentence into title case. Now if we go back to this title.php file that we created. Now what happens is upon going to that URL, this class will be loaded through the container and then the exact same process. Our assistant will take a look at the class, it'll see that inject attribute, and it will look at, it will first look in the container to see whether or not we already have an instance of the writer class, and if not, it will automatically instantiate one for us. Then upon instantiating the writer class, again, it'll go into this writer class, it will look at the inject attribute, it'll see the convert class, and it will automatically either retrieve the convert class if one already exists in the container or it will instantiate a new one for us. This means all of our items and dependencies are already injected directly into the classes as we need them without us having to go out and get them ourselves. And let's move on to how to get and set items within the container. As previously stated, you can think of the container as a toolbox that contains any and all items needed to help facilitate these software requests. Now instead of the container only injecting the items into our classes during instantiation, we can also get and set individual items as desired on demand. And I'll give you a quick example of that now. So first, inside the HTML file of our view, we're simply going to replace these h1 tags with a title merge field. Then inside the writer PHP class, inside the use declarations, we are going to add the container class. And inside the properties section, we are first going to add that inject attribute for our container class. And then the actual property declaration itself. So anytime this class is instantiated, that CNTR property will be an instance of our container. Now within the one format method of our, in this class, we're going to add a new item to our container through its set method. So this CNTR set, and we'll call this item demo, and for a value we'll put set example. Now again, the values of these items within the container can be anything you wish. Strings, arrays, objects, closures, whatever you would like. For this example, we're simply using a string. Now next, inside the PHP class of our view, we're going to, once again, add container to our use declarations. And once again, we're going to add an inject attribute into the properties for our container class. And again, uh, the actual property declaration itself. Now within the render method of this view, just below where it executes that format method within the writer class, we're going to assign a new variable. And we're going to assign the title variable, which is the merge field we added to the HTML file. And for its value, we are going to get that demo item from the container that we previously added through the containers get method. Now, with that in the way, we can go to Firefox, reload the page. And as we can see, it works exactly as expected. The title of the page is now set example, which is the value of that demo item we added to our container. And with that said, let's jump in and see how constructor injection works. Now we already know how attribute based injection works. We simply add an inject attribute to the various properties within our classes. 
There is another method that replaces this called constructor injection, which I'll show you an example of now. So for an example, within our writer PHP class, we can go ahead and remove these two properties that we previously had, and instead we can replace them with a constructor. And then as for arguments within the instructor, we can use constructor property promotion, so private, so container, cntr, dollar convert. And that's literally it. And as simple as that. Now when this class loads, it'll work exactly the same as before. The only difference is it's now using constructor-based injection instead of attribute-based injection. And to show you that, we'll go back to Firefox. We'll reload the page. And it's still working exactly like it did previously. Now there is no difference between using constructor or attribute-based injection, and it's simply a personal preference. Uh, there is no good or bad way, so whichever one, whichever method you prefer. And with that out of the way, let's jump into how to instantiate new objects through the container using the make method. Now sometimes it's impossible to use either attribute or constructor-based injection because we won't have all the values necessary to instantiate a new object until later on in the code. So it has to be instantiated within the code and not within a property. For these cases, the container does have a make method, which I will give you a quick example of now. To help save time, I've already written a very quick page model class, which simply uses constructor property promotion and contains three properties. There's that property simply for example sake, and then two read-only properties for num and author. Now with, back within our writer PHP class, We'll add a quick use declara declara declaration for our new model class. And then for example, let's create a new create page function. Let's so int n and string a, and it's going to return a page model instance. Now to create an instance of this page model class through our container, we simply go this. CNTR make and then the first argument to this is the full class name that we we like to instantiate so page model and then the second argument is an associative array of all name based arguments we would like to inject so for example num is the name of one of the properties and the value will be the end argument that get passed and then author is another name of, of a property and we'll pass that the a value and that is, then I'll simply return the page. And that's literally all there is to it to instantiate new objects directly from the containers make method. And with all that said, that gives, should hopefully give you a basic understanding of exactly what dependency injection is, the concept behind it, and how it works. Once again, my name is Matt, core maintainer of Apex. I do loads of short and to the point videos such as this regarding all things PHP in general and Apex in particular. If that by chance interests you, please make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated to the channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.